All right, here we go. Let's take a look at the next section here. We're going to be modeling rational numbers. So what does that mean? We are just going to look at different situations and uh, kind of express it in different uh, ways. Hopefully write some expressions to help solve that. So check out this dude. He literally is modeling math right now. That is what he's doing, a mathematical model. Let's make some models right now. Here we go. Okay, if you need to pause and read these so you have an idea of what's going on, take a little second for yourself uh, and check it out. Basically, we have this scuba diver, so we're going to try to first model it on a number line. Check out my number line over here. This is a vertical number line. Don't freak out. This is just good for showing like height and depth. You don't have to do it this way, but I want to kind of show that for you. So check it out here. We've got a scuba diver who's 12 meters, so this person starts down here at negative 12. So we're just showing the height, sometimes called the altitude. In this case, is more of a depth. Uh, of this diver. So they're at negative 12 right here. They see some sharks, they decide to swim up seven. So from here, they're gonna swim up seven. So I'm just gonna draw a little arrow going up. He went up seven. Then what happens? Um, the sharks leave. So now they're ready to go back down, check things out. So here I am, you can see I'm at negative five. I go down 10, so I go down that seven I already went, plus a little bit extra. And where am I ending up? I'm going to end up right here. So my model shows that first in red here, I went up seven. And then in blue, what happened? I went down 10. So if I had to write a model for this, what is happening? Well, I started at uh, 12 meters underwater, so that's negative 12. I added to it seven, I went up seven. And then either way, you can say you subtract a 10, or you can say plus a negative 10, you add a negative to that. This would be the expression right here. So here's the expression that shows what's going on. Awesome, that's what we're looking for right now. Expression is just when we add or subtract, multiply, divide, do some operations, but we don't have an equal sign in there. That's what we're trying to write. Now we gotta solve it. So after you do that, let's go ahead and solve it. So you can go ahead and just solve your expression. You can say, oh yeah, what is negative seven plus 12? Well, that's negative five minus 10 more. Let's go ahead and combine these and say negative five minus five more is negative 15. And what am I? I'm negative 15 meters. Or you can use your nice vertical lumber line. Here it is right here. I can see that I'm at negative 15 when I finish. That's why I drew this fancy thing over here. So that's our goal. Can we represent it somehow in a model? Can we write some kind of expression? And then can we get that answer? Boom, rock and roll. Awesome, let's do another one. All right, temperature in the morning is 68 degrees. So we can mark 68 degrees on our little number line here. It's almost 70 here. This is kind of by five, so it won't be perfect, but I'm somewhere right around here, put a dot. And then by midday, it got up to 77, which is up here somewhere. Boom, there we go, 77. And I wanna know how much did the temperature change? Always know what you're looking for. I'm actually looking for the change in temperature. So I'm looking for this distance. And in fact, in the practice, I just have you finding some distances. How far is it from this to this? So how far is it from 77 to 68? Well, this is just really a subtraction problem. There it is right there. If you wanna write it out over here, you can say 77 minus 68. That's my expression to represent it. And then all I have to do is subtract it. What is 77? minus 68, well, that is just plain old nine. So this is going to be a nine degree change. Awesome, so nine degrees is how much it changed. Excellent, there we go. So I've got the model, I've got the expression, and I've got the answer. Three things we're looking for this section. All right, do I have to always use a vertical number line? No way, you can use whatever you want. So if Michaela is hiking, uh, she's at camp, so here, let's just draw a little camp. I'm gonna draw X, like that's where she started. She goes four miles east, so east is this way. So she's gonna go four miles this way, so I'll say plus four. Then she takes a break, whatever, has a snack, and then she goes four miles west. Wapow, there she goes to the left, and that's minus four. So what happens here? Can I write myself an expression? Sure, she went four to the right. You can say you add a negative four or minus four, they're both cool, either way is cool. I'm gonna draw them both here. Either one of these are legit, whatever you prefer. I went four, I subtracted four, or I went four and I'm adding a negative four. What's gonna happen here when I go to solve this expression? So what is four minus four? It's just zero. It's just zero. Where is the hiker? She's zero miles from where she started. So when this happens, this is pretty cool. When you've got, uh, especially this one over here is what we look for. This is called the additive inverse. So if you ever uh, add something, 
and you make it go to zero. Wow. Well, so four plus a negative four cancels. They like canceling each other out. This is gonna be hugely important coming up. So when this happened, this is called I'm adding its inverse. The inverse of four is negative four. So I'm back to where I started. It's like she never left camp. She went out, she came right back. Fantastic. Let's wrap this up. We got two more of these bad boys. Uh, we're gonna give you all kinds of things, and maybe a number line's not the best. So get a little sciencey here up in this one. So we've got electrons and protons. A, a proton is uh, P for positive, I like to think of, and the electron has this negative charge. So if I've got this ion with six protons and four electrons, what is its charge? Well, this is a classic place for like our number chips. So I've got six of these positive. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Notice this does not look as good as when I actually had the chips ready to go. That's okay. Anything that kind of represents my six protons, you could put six P, P for protons. These are my positives. Then I've got four electrons, so I'm just going to draw my little negative chips right here. So really, the red is the protons. These are my protons up here. And then the blue is my electrons. And if I'm looking for a charge, well, they bond together and they kind of cancel each other out. They're almost like, a, they call them sometimes like a zero pair. They cancel each other out. So first, let's write the expression. Uh, I've got six. I'm adding in a negative four, or you could do six minus four. Either one of these cool is cool. So these zero pairs, why are they call zero pairs? Well, they cancel each other out. Boom, 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 and boom. So they're gone, and what's left? Sure, I have a charge of two, or you can say the charge is positive two when I solve it. So this model, you can actually help solve it. Again, model expression, and then answer the charge is, I'll go ahead and write that out, because we're really big into labeling. So the charge is going to be a positive two for this. Fantastic, I feel like we're cruising, man. So let's model the last situation. Do I always have to draw a picture and all that? If it asks you to, yes, <laughs> for the short answer. But uh, maybe you can just get by with just doing it. So Anthony has $50 and then this is going to happen to Anthony. So my ultimate goal is here, how much money does he have? And what was his, uh, how much did he gain or lose? So. You can just kind of write it as you read it. So I've got $50. So let's put it down here. I've got $50. And he goes and mows the lawn and somebody pays him $10. Woohoo! That's awesome. Well, then he's going to spend $8 on a chalupa at Taco Bell or something. He buys lunch. But then on his way home from lunch, he stops by the playground. Boom, finds $5. So there it is. If you want to put this on a number line, a vertical or horizontal, that's cool. But in this case, it just wants the answer. So let's just go ahead and do it. So that's the expression. Um, that models what's going on. So let's go ahead and find it out. So I'm gonna say 50 plus 10 is 60. I still have the minus eight when he bought lunch. So let's go minus eight. So 60 minus eight is 52, plus that $5. And then he found that $5. So let's add that 52 plus five is 57. So he now has $57. So this is how much money he has. So he started, with 50, so that's key. He started with $50. He ended with what, $57? So that's where like, his, pretend it's like a bank roll or his account, maybe it's just the cash in his pocket. Uh, he ended at $57. So how much money did he gain or lose? Well, this is called the net change. When we're looking for how much did it change, we're saying, well, it's called the net change. How much uh, difference is there? So if I start at 50, and then I end at 57, I'm just going to subtract these two numbers. So I could say 57 minus 50, the net change in this case is $7. And he did go up, this is a gain of $7. So to find net change, you'd really just subtract them and then um, it's going to be with like the absolute value. If you'd done it the other way, if you said, well, uh, Mr. Bruss, didn't he start at 50 and you wanna subtract 57, sure. Yeah, you can do that, 50 minus 57, but you get negative seven, which is fine, but really this is a distance. This is if I, if I was on a number line, so here's 50 and here's 57, what is the distance between 50 and 57? Well, it's, this is the distance, it is seven. So if you're counting up, you went up seven. If you're counting down, you're negative seven. But if I'm talking about how much did he change, I'm talking about uh, he changed seven. That is the key, so fantastic, that is it. Model some math, rock it out. I hope you do well on the practice and good luck on the master check. Peace out.